Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to the very first episode of a new series on surviving Mars, inspired by the Expanse. Let me explain what I mean here. We are starting off trying to terraform Mars. This is going to be somewhat role-played like we're in the Expanse universe. If you're not familiar with what the Expanse is, it is a unbelievably wonderful sci-fi show that you should definitely go in and tune in for. It's on its fourth season now. Um, the mystery here, the mystery is an active storyline that happens throughout the playthrough, and the one I am picking is the Last War. It's one of the harder ones. Um, I'm not going to have any rival colonies, because in the Expanse, the colonists of Mars are united in the, uh, MCRN. Uh, but the game rules here, we have got the Last Arc, meaning I can only send passengers to Mars once, which is a very challenging way to play. Long Ride... The ride between Mars and Earth is much longer. Inflation, uh, importing things from Earth is more costly over time. And hunger, I can't import food from Earth. Basically, designing it so that Earth is not going to help us out after we start up the colony. Or at least it will be very expensive to. Trying to roleplay being our own colonists. Now to start off, I'm going to change my prefabs. I'm going to take uh, Drone Hub down to 1. I'm not going to take a dozer, and instead I'm going to take an explorer. I'm going to remove some polymers. And let's see, one of the sterling generators and bring a transport. And add in one more orbital probe. Okay. Uh, for this ship, this ship uh, here, we ought to give it a nice expanse name. So I'm going to give it the Rocinante. As far as um, landing points go, uh, I was sort of eager to pick one that had a lot of uh, meteor strikes. Uh, but maybe not too many other threats, as I already have a lot of the other settings up pretty high. As you can see, the difficulty challenge rating is pretty high as it is already. Uh, so, something like, like here. Relatively flat, some meteors, decent resources... Seems alright. Now this is a totally random starting location for me, so I do not know where all of the resources are on this map, which Welcome is to Mars. the added challenge. So right at the start here, um, I will try to explain best I can how to play as I play. Uh, let's look at our tech tree. The tech that is being offered here is random. It's randomized a little bit. And the one I'm definitely going to invest in first is the Explorer AI. That's a very powerful one. And then after that, I'm going to queue up the Martian engines, which uses less fuel to send rockets to and from Earth and Mars. Uh, I do start off with some Martian vegetation uh, designed for station and interplanetary projects already researched because of the settings I chose. So we have this sector E8. Uh, already scanned. Generally speaking, uh, the starting sector that you scan tends to have um, pretty decent resources. So if you take a look here, there's a high chance for concrete and metals here. What I need is also water. Uh, so what I'm looking for is a place with a high chance of water as well. Okay, so we've got water and concrete and then i i also want uh rare metals there's maybe rare metals here polymers hmm. when you start off you really want to be near a rare metal area so there's one over there okay so we've used up our our four probes and i'm gonna put something myself down uh here Just um, about as close as I can get to the rare uh, underground metals uh, and staying within the underground water. Uh, this is not a very plentiful underground water node. Now, for a future um, survey, I want to keep surveying up the area around me. I'm going to dismiss these sort of tooltips as I don't need them yet. And let's go ahead and land. Now, before I even bother landing, I'm going to send a backup um, resupply. 
So this resupply here is a totally new ship. I'm going to name it the Doniger. Uh, we are going to send a commander, a dozer. Um, and a whole bunch of starting resources. The reason being, um, the more time elapses, the more expensive these starting resources are going to get. I'm also going to send three additional probes. And let's do one more sterling generator. Uh, maybe not even the sterling. Let's go with uh, just some extra drones and probes. Alright, we'll launch that. But of course, because of the long ride, it will take a while for uh, that resupply ship to get to us. So here's our starting ship, the Rosinante. And I'm going to put down a universal storage. And then also, let's do some metals and eventually fuel. And this is so that it can empty out its own uh, goods. Now immediately, uh, what I'm going to want to do to help scan the nearby area is let's set up our Sterling generator. I don't want to set it up too close to the water or the concrete because water and concrete extractors produce dust which causes wear and tear on components. So I'm going to set it up in between uh, and I'm going to set the Sterling generator which is just a power generator that doesn't need any maintenance which is kind of nice. And I'm going to set this up next to a sensor tower. I'm going to set the sensor tower and the Sterling generator as top priorities. My RC Explorer here, I'm going to send to scan anomalies. I'm going to call this Holden. Why not? Uh, then the little transport here is going to start gathering resources. Um, and we'll call this little transport uh, Amos. Alright. So at the very start, I don't start off with any metals, but I do start off with some electronics. So the sensor tower that I'm setting up uh, will have the electronics it needs. Uh, Holden, my little explorer, is going to queue up to scan some of the anomalies I've already discovered. I'm actually not going to survey here because it's unlikely that anything is there. It's not a buildable area. I want to only survey places that I think can immediately benefit me. So here we go, we got our sensor tower up, and with this sensor tower, we get a little bit of advance warning if uh, meteor showers are coming down on us, and then additionally, it speeds up the survey of the immediate area as well. So I will be able to survey the surrounding area a little bit more quickly as a result. Very, very useful. So the next thing I want to do here is to start to exploit the water resource I've got over here. So I'm going to set up a water extractor, and I'm going to put the... Um, so the blue hex it has to overlay the deposit, and then the gray hex is where it uh, creates sort of dust pollution. Anomaly analyzed. Milestone achieved. Okay, I just analyzed my first anomaly, which hit a milestone. So let me explain milestones. If I go into... The mission profile, or actually the uh, milestones profile here. Normally you have rivals when you play, and the first one to hit these milestones uh, gains the extra research. But um, it doesn't really make sense from role-playing standpoint to have uh, rivals on Mars, because in the Expanse universe, really only Martians live on Mars, like the humans that wanted to settle there. And there isn't... Um, they don't really compete with one another. They're sort of united. They're actually oddly united. Uh, so instead, I have no rivals, which means I can hit these milestones whenever I do. It's not a rush. It's not a race with any other rivals. Uh, instead, for added difficulty, I have cranked up uh, a lot of the other settings to be much harder. 
Uh, rivals actually, in a way, makes it easier because if you befriend rivals in Surviving Mars by default, you can also trade with them. So let's say you were running a huge deficit of food, um, you could have them offer you food. Uh, and that makes it a little bit easier to feed yourself. Whereas now, I have no rivals, it also means I have no trade. Which means if I don't grow every little last bite that I eat myself, I starve to death. And my entire colony dies. So, like I said, there is an added difficulty. Alright, so this water extractor is going to, once I have concrete, uh, extract water. So I also need to add in a concrete extractor. And I'm going to set up this concrete extractor so it is not so close to everything else. Uh, so it just needs to overlay the... the um, let's put it right there. Yeah. It just needs to overlay this deposit here. And this deposit is grade high, which means it will generate a lot of concrete uh, for a given a set amount of effort. And then the concrete Sector here... Scanned. Ooh, sector scanned. So, what do we want? I want a tribal electric scrubber. That is a very powerful thing to have early on. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Wow. That is very, very lucky. So, when you play, you're going to have random sort of events that happen to you. And uh, I just benefited from one. So, what this scrubber does is it basically anything within its sphere of influence it will maintain without a cost of upkeep. So for instance, uh, there is maintenance here where I have to give one metal um, periodically to upkeep the sensor tower. Uh, the scrubber, if given electronics, uh, removes maintenance entirely, which is incredibly good. I also have a drone hub. Anomaly um, analyzed. So this drone hub, I'm going to place with everything else. Get that set up. There's more to the Baron. So the anomalies that are researched on the surface here uh, unlocked some tech for me. Oh, drone hubs. Let's not build this drone hub just yet. Uh, I have a technology here which adds. Additional drones when a drone hub is first constructed, um, which means it will be stronger. So I'm going to outsource for a billion dollars. I'm going to outsource some science. I like to do this early on because um, Surviving Mars is a little slow. Of a, it's a slower paced game, and outsourcing initially will help to uh, will help to speed up the pace. So we'll build this drone hub as soon as I get the research that makes it stronger. So the con concrete extractor here, it is going to require um, a place to put the concrete. But then it is also going to require uh, a dumping site. So this dumping site is just sort of the waste rock that, that you accumulate when you exploit resources. The water... Extractor over here will also need a dumping site. And we'll get that set up as well. So, at the moment I'm just surveying the surrounding area here. And I'm not really finding very much to do with holding the uh, my explorer. While Amos is collecting metals. Now, initially, metals here are going to be um, sort of your bread and butter. They're they're essentially what you need to uh, research complete uh, to construct everything. So, normally, you would build large solar panels or even um, large wind turbines. Now, the solar panels just cost metal, so they're a little bit cheaper. The smaller ones generate more power, but have an increased maintenance but because I have the scrubber uh, I don't really need to worry about maintenance which is super super nice I, I can't express how nice that is so uh, I'm going to set up this scrubber here and power it on and then I'm going to increase the radius of the scrubber and you'll see what I mean by that in a moment here um, alright so the 
The first thing I wanted researched, which is the Explorer AI, which generates extra science just for having Explorer on the surface, is done. And now I'm working on Drone Swarm. Once I have Drone Swarm uh, finished, I will set up this drone hub. Good, good news. Alright, so the scrubber, let me speed up time a little bit. The scrubber, meteor once this incoming. is constructed... Oh, boy. That meteor narrowly took out my, uh, my main ship. Sector scanned. Now, for most of the natural disasters, there is a counter. For meteors, you can get sort of lasers to help shoot them down. Uh, that's sort of a late tier tech. Um, for cold waves, you can get, you know, a uh, subthermal ground warmers. Um, some things like dust devils can't really be countered. Uh, there's some techs that help to counter a little bit. So now I've got my um, concrete extractor going. And I'm setting up my triboelectric scrubber. I'm going to increase the service area of the triboelectric scrubber to now cover all of these things here. So anything within this radius will be cleaned periodically. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... around the center here I'm going to start laying out small solar panels now normally the um, the small solar panels would be um, less efficient material wise because research complete. they require maintenance often but um, in my case because I have the tribal electric scrubber anything within this sphere is sort of free which is incredibly nice yeah. You can cosmetically just change the way something looks with this button. Not all things have multiple skins. Uh, the Sterling Generators do. In fact, I can open the Sterling Generator for it to generate some extra power. And because the Tribal Electric Scrubber covers its radius, it won't need periodic maintenance. Which is kind of nice. I get some bonus power for free. Uh, the Water Extractor is now done. But I don't have a way to store the water. So one thing I could do here is um, add a water tower. Now, <clears throat> normally I would um, I would put this water tower within the tribal electric scrubber. But the water tower's upkeep is just metal. And metal is cheap and plentiful. So I'm not going to worry about putting cheap and plentiful things Resources inside that low. take up a lot of room. All right, so Drone Swarm is done, and this drone hub starts with six drones instead of the usual four because I waited strategically. Uh, taking a look at the additional science here. Let's allow faster drones and rovers is kind of nice, but actually... The hydros hyd Hydroscopic Vaporators, or whatever it's called, is also really nice. That allows you to harvest uh, liquid water from the air. So as I, uh, as I build these out, um, what I can do is move the cable so the cable doesn't take up space. And let's prioritize the inner solar panels Primarily. And this will be a lot of power. Alright, the Donager, the other ship I had, is coming down. Be mindful Research of complete. the gray circle. This gray circle also uh, creates dust. So the Martian Advance Engines are done, which means that um, uh, I can blast off with less fuel, which is really nice. I'm going to get the extractor amplification as a queued tech. So here's my growing little power grid. Now one thing about this power grid is I am... I'm going to want to store power. So I'm going to add some batteries in it. Actually, I'm not going to add batteries there. I'm going to add batteries... Uh, 
over here. Now the reason is I'm going to save the edge spaces of this radius for things that need to plug into pipes and, and whatnot. So now I'm creating water and storing it. The next thing I want to do is let's put a fuel refinery. And this is uh, just such an object that should be um, near the edge. So as you can see, this is fully encompassed by the tribal electric. And I can connect a pipe to it. So the fuel refinery will create fuel, generate fuel with the water that I have. Uh, it is going to require a fuel depot. I'll put that right there. And given that I now have uh, power accumulators, um, what happens here is they charge up with the solar power uh, that I provide it, and then they slowly dissipate at night when there's no solar to be had. So I'm generating fuel, water. Um, also, I have now a commander and a dozer. Uh, the commander here, I'm going to name, um, Alex, and let's get the commander and dozer to do something I'm going to need to do soon. Um, what I need to do is, I'm Sector on a cliff scanned. here, I need to create a ramp to access more of the map, so I'm going to create a ramp that starts here and ends right there. Have it be as small as possible so it's easy to do. Uh, and then... I'm going to give this dozer uh, the name Naomi Nagata. And I'm going to move the... Research complete. I'm going to move the um, the command unit here a little closer. And I guess I can give first and last name. So we just got decommissioned protocol. Um, let's see what we've got next. Scientists and botanists. Increased performance is going to be very, very key. The reason being, um, I have to grow all my own food. So when we start to colonize, my botanists need to be doing a really, really, really good job. Or I'm toast. Alright, so Holden. And Amos. Amos Burton. And I guess fitting the theme, this will be the James Holden. And then this should be the Alex um, Kamal. All right, so I do need a place to store the waste rock that I'm generating, creating this ramp. So let's create a little dump site. Scanning's going well. So fuel, oh, another thing now that I have fuel, I start off because of the the faction I have, I start off with these um, um, sort of greenhouse gas factories. So I'm going to put them down and make sure that they're within the sphere of influence of the tribal electric scrubber. I'm also going to reduce the priority of the Donager Sector here scanned. so that we I refuel the Rasinante to leave first. Oh, we found another science thing for Holden to go search. So I have to really lay down the groundwork for the first dome. That's the goal. The goal, of course, is to colonize Mars. 
and uh, I don't yet have what I need to set up the first dome. All right. Send the Amos to uh, gather more material. And I also have these new orbital probes. Anomaly found. So I'm going to, to strategically um, scan around the map here. I guess my last one will be Anomaly analyzed. There. Okay, so now I have little bits of the map discovered everywhere. And that can allow me in the future to set up sensor towers in order to... Um, to scan the surrounding areas a little bit faster. Oh, that is a very good science to have the compact passenger module. That will allow me to send 10 additional colonists on the first uh, maiden voyage, which, you know, can help avoid uh, research complete. having too few people for too many jobs. So the uh, evaporators are done. Um, I don't yet have... Uh, the moisture uh, farms set up, but it'll help. Uh, these greenhouse gas factories. All right, my power excess, I definitely need to add some additional power to the power grid. So we'll get those built up. That tribal electric scrubber, I can't tell you how unbelievably useful that will be. That is a real treasure of a find. Alright, as you can see, the electricity that I have is going up and up and up. And now these greenhouse gas factories are adding to the temperature of Mars. Which is one of the four ways I uh, terraform Mars. You can create atmosphere, you can increase temperature, you can increase the sort of moisture in the air, and then you can also increase vegetation. And some of these things need to be done um, together in synergy to have an effect. For instance, uh, Decent vegetation requires a, often a certain amount of um, temperature and water. You can't just have more to one the without the other. Environ. All right, taking a look at my tech tree again. Uh, Mars crowdfunding. That can help to uh, sponsor some additional science early on. That's how I tend to like to spend my money rather than sending exported goods. So when this ramp gets done, and right now we have Alex Kamal, four drones, and Naomi Nagata, the dozer, that might kind of be the wrong. Let me try this again. Uh, you are... The dozer really ought to be Amos Burton. The explorer, uh, the transport here... Anomaly found could be Naomi Nagata. All right, so another anomaly is found. Let's send Holden over. Each anomaly um, does different things. Some increases your base science. Some gives you new technologies. Uh, some gives you breakthroughs, which is specialty science. These things. So this here will just unlock new technologies for me. When I say just, I mean that's really, really good. But that's what it does. All right, so now, as you can see, uh, as long as I have the maintenance for this tribal electric scrubber, um, which is one uh, microchip, one advanced ele or electronic, everything within the sphere stays nice and healthy. I no longer have need of that cabling. Anomaly analyzed. There's more to the bar. We got anonymous sensors, which I definitely want promptly. And 
The anonymous sensors allows sensor towers to no longer require uh, power or maintenance, which allows you to survey the map uh, a lot more quickly. Uh, that is a very, very good research to have. If you want to uncover the mysteries in the science of the map. Which I do. Uh, because I have an underground uh, structure here, it's sort of generating polymers. And I should definitely capitalize on that uh, before that uh, upwelling comes back. And then as soon as this ramp is constructed, I'll be able to also go down here to uh, survey the things I found down here. Um, most maps are multi-leveled like this, and you're going to need ramps or tunnels. Ramps here are terraforming projects. Uh, tunnels are engineering projects. You can also create tunnels uh, to bridge, but the tunnels cost uh, a considerable amount. Now, if you're trying to send resources like um, power or water... Uh, tunnels are pretty pretty useful. But uh, normally I use ramps because as long as you have a dozer or um, or a command drone, you can do it sort of for free. So the drones and the dozer here are building this ramp. And on, on this map, I only need one ramp. Now, you could also uh, flatten out things. You There's a whole bunch of different terraforming projects. You can flatten out... You know, sections of mountain that you don't like, for instance, if you're trying to make room for a big dome or whatever. Uh, but keep in mind, if you flatten out, the, the more terraforming you do, you sort of ruin the quality of the soil. Uh, so the, you are ch eventually trying to terraform Mars in a way where you're creating like a hospitable environment. And if you're constantly bulldozing everything, you're going to effectively ruin the, um, the topsoil's quality. So, not something you necessarily want to do. Now, if you pan out, like I just have, out to the map like that, uh, you can see what sort of resources are in what different areas. Which gives you an idea of where to hunt to to look for resources. Surface resources, you're only really ever going to uh, find polymers and metals. You're not going to really find anything else. Um, Alright, so this ship here is getting close to being refueled. My uh, power accum uh, accumulators here are nice and full up. I'm going to invest in uh, maybe two more. Alright, according to the map, I've gotten all the... Uh, all of the polymers from that tile. Getting polymers early from the map like this is very, very handy because it allows you to not have to import them from Earth, which is very costly. I'm reassigning the drones from the Rosinante and the Doniger over to this drone hub. This drone hub can support up to 100 drones. Not that you'd really need that many. Let's go ahead and spend more money to outsource more tech. And the next thing I'm going to do is to have the Naomi Nagata uh, transport ship. Research complete. There we go. The compact passenger. So as soon as we get autonomous sensors, I'm going to set up sensor towers in more areas. So that is the next project for me. We'll set up a sensor tower here, maybe one here, one here, one here, possibly even one here, and that will allow you, me to um, survey the area a lot faster. Now, I can send my ship uh, home, which I'm probably going to do, but alternatively, I could send them to do planetary missions. Now, I don't have a lot of planetary missions to do, so this one is just going to return milestone to Earth. Milestone achieved. And that gives me a little boost to science for hitting a milestone.
Now another thing I would be able to do is if I have a lot of drones, as you can see over here, sort of idle, I can assign four of these drones over to this drone commander. So this drone commander is controlling eight drones, which uh, will make terraforming that ramp a little bit faster. I might as well, if I can make the work go quicker, I shall. So now it's refilling the Doninger, providing that the green, greenhouse gas factories have the fuel that they demand. Uh, Alright, so then I'm going to got a ship or um, transport. What I'm going to do now is to load up um, five electronics into it. And then I'm going to tell it to load uh, five metals. And start to put metals and electronics in far-flung corners of nowhere. Um, the purpose being that we are going to set up uh, sensor towers. Now this serves two purposes. It allows you to survey a little bit faster. So allow me to survey these areas where I set up the towers a lot more quickly. And then it also will... Oh. This drone ran out of power trying to get to uh, get to the hub here, so I just uh, I just grabbed it. All right, so here's the sensor tower. And I left one electronic and one metal to build it. And then I'm also going to set up a sensor tower somewhere Research over here. Research complete. Autonomous sensors just got completed. Um, just make sure to have science projects queued up. All right, the accumula uh, accumulators charging up quite nicely. Now there's four new planetary um, modules to survey, or um, mysteries to do. Uh, so instead of um, this Doninger here going back home, what I could do, I could send like seven drones to do research progress. And that's what I'll, I'll queue up to do. Research progress sounds good to me. All right, so one of the sensor towers will go there. Spreading them out is uh, gives you the most benefit. And the dozers over here trying to finish up that ramp. All right, so that's one sensor tower done. Meteor shower incoming. Sector scanned. Anomaly found. A meteor shower is incoming. And now with this new sensor tower, researching or surveying these new areas out here are a lot faster. So meteor storm's coming in. I gotta be careful of that. Hopefully it won't hit me directly. All right, and that's the resources for the other tower. And then I'm going to dump the remaining three metals and three Research electronics complete. here. Anomaly analyzed. Because uh, I'll come back to it later. I would rather have the Nagata to be uh, collecting more resources. The more sensor towers you have, additionally, you will be given advanced warning for uh, events like meteor showers. So I got a one day, six hour advance warning because I have two sensor towers. Uh, and the more sensor towers I have up, the more advanced warning I will get. So here's another sensor tower. And, and as a result, you know, I'm researching um, sector H6, for instance, at 388% speed rather than 
uh, you know, the 30% speed I'd get. And each tower also gives th a blanket 10% anywhere, um, which is also pretty nice. So, like, this corner here is, you know, it doesn't have any sensor on it, but um, I still get a 30% boost. So, I'll eventually have, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 total sensors. So, no matter where on the map, I'll have a 60% boost to it. I'm also having the Holden uh, follow any of the surveyed sectors because if there are anomalies there, I'll be the closest to it possible. Uh, science uh, research picks up where you left off, so it's not a, much of an issue to change uh, what you're currently focusing on. So, Earth Mars Initiative just opened up, which gives another blanket 100 research uh, per... Um, and I definitely want to pick that up. Alright, this ramp is just about done. So, I'm going to send the Holden over so that I can start heading down here. And I should also do the Nagata as well, because she is going to need to uh, move some resources around. So here's the ramp. The ramp is done. Uh, unfortunately, that also means that the Burton-class ship here... Actually, let's load the uh, Waste Rock. Waste Rock, uh, later down the line, has... It's a resource that's actually useful. So I'm going to move all of the Waste Rock from building that ramp over to my colony. Whoa, and there's meteor strikes getting awfully close to uh, Kamal here. So I gotta be careful about that. But uh, that's about all the time I have for this episode. So I am very much hoping that you enjoyed this episode and we'll tune in next time. If you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, questions of any type, drop me a line. If you'd like to discuss this, Discord is the place to be. Uh, you can get a link off of Rodomont.com. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.